Do you need unit testing? Yes, you do. You might wonder why? That's why. You don't want that, do you? But unit testing is hard to implement, right? Well, not with this tool. With real-time test results and metrics in line as you code and just a few steps to set up, you can save yourself from the complaints of your future customers in just this many minutes. So let's do this. First things first, let's install today's tool. Head over to the Encrunch website, our sponsor for today, download the installer. In my case, it'll be for Visual Studio 2022. Select the MSI file and run it. Your computer might warn you, but don't worry. You can just run it either way. Once Encrunch is installed, you'll see it integrates directly into Visual Studio. By the way, if you are running JetBrains Writer, you can get this tool for that as well, so you don't have to use Visual Studio like I do here. However, we are used to Visual Studio, so we will just go ahead and use that. All right, now to create a new project, run Visual Studio, create new, and just start testing with something like a console app. We will build a Fibonacci sequence program and test that. Once it's launched, you'll need to enable it. By default, it will always be disabled, so make sure to do this step. You can do so right here. Here you can select the amount of memory it will use, as well as if it should use parallel testing, RDI, and all of the things that you should definitely enable, as those are what make this tool so convenient to use. However, keep in mind that these will consume resources to run the tests, but with any somewhat modern system, you should be able to use them nonetheless. Also, you can change these settings later as, well, if you notice any issues with them. Now, lastly, we'll use the Microsoft testing tools. If you are doing the same, go to manage new get packages and check if mstests.test framework is installed. If not, search for this package and install it. The code for both files we'll use today is also in the description. But in short, it's just a tool to find what number is at what position in the Fibonacci sequence. It's not that important really. We just wanted to test it against a real project. If you get errors about the test project not finding the main project namespace, make sure to add the reference here. We also have a new file here to do our unit tests. We will go over this shortly. And that's it for setup. Now we can start to try it out. One of Ncrunch's standout features is its code coverage visualization. As you write and modify your code, Ncrunch shows which parts are covered by tests using colored markers right in the editor. In short, green markers indicate a line is covered by passing tests. Red markers indicate a line is covered, but by at least one failing test. And black markers indicate no tests are covering this line. And a hotspot marker indicates a line is covered by tests, but executes slowly. You can also just hover over these, as I'm doing right here, to learn more. If you open up metrics by right-clicking in the bottom right corner, you can also see your overall code coverage. Great. By the way, if there are sections of your code you do not want to cover by tests, you can do so as well with these inline comments here. However, keep in mind that these won't affect the actual execution of the tests, but they do tell the tool not to capture coverage information for these regions of the code. This should help you keep your workspace clean of unwanted data. Sounds good, right? So let's keep going. Now let's see the real reason why I like this tool so much. Let's take a closer look at Ncrunch's runtime data inspection using our Fibonacci calculator project. This feature is incredibly useful for seeing what's happening in your code in real time. Let's look at our Fibonacci method. Suppose you want to understand how the Fibonacci numbers are being calculated for different inputs. Place your cursor over these icons over to the left of the script and you should already get some information here. If you hover over this section here, you see a message saying open RDI overlay. Click this and Ncrunch will show you a tooltip with runtime results. For instance, if one of your tests calculates the eighth Fibonacci number, the tooltip might show evolving values of variables A and B 
as the loop in the Fibonacci method executes. This immediate feedback can help you verify that the iterative calculation works correctly. If you find this data particularly useful, you can pin the tooltip. This keeps the data visible as you navigate elsewhere in the code. It's particularly helpful when you're adjusting your tests or method logic and need to see how changes affect the execution without rerunning the debugger manually. Encrunch doesn't just show data from a single run. When right-clicking, it aggregates data across all tests that execute the same code paths. This aggregation provides a full view of your function's behavior on the various test conditions, such as calculating small versus large Fibonacci numbers. But also, if you left-click here, you should be also able to see the results of each individual test running on this method by itself, just as you did with the combined results. You can also customize the data you collect through NCrunch's configuration settings. This lets you focus on the most relevant data points in case you don't want everything to be covered at all times. Honestly, this alone made me want to make this video already, but there is more to this than runtime data inspection. Another nice thing about NCrunch is distributed processing. NCrunch can spread the workload of running tests across several machines in your network. This not only speeds up the testing process, but also helps in managing resource usage more effectively. You can set this up right here in the configuration menu. These features can drastically improve your testing efficiency, especially in larger projects. This may not be for everyone, as not all of us have this processing power at hand to distribute our workloads. But it's good to know if you have the power available to you. And Crunch also offers various engine modes. You may have noticed them during installation. What you have is Always On, which continuously runs tests as you type. On Demand, where tests run only when you explicitly request them. And Mixed Mode, which is a balance of both. For instance, if you're working on a smaller project or on a powerful development machine, the always on mode might be the most convenient. However, for larger projects or when resources are a concern, switching to manual might be the better choice. You can see the difference here between them if I make a test fail. If we have it in manual, it won't retest it until I run it myself. If it's automatic, it runs it immediately. Also, if your project struggles with performance, be it because of size or just your hardware, but you still want your tests to run automatically, one thing you can do is enable this impact mode here. This should still run tests automatically, but only when the tool believes changes have impacted them. So it should run much better overall. Just be aware that it won't always be 100% accurate, so you might to run all tests every now and then to be sure. Configuring these modes is simple and can be done from the NCrunch configuration panel, so I'd say just try them out and see what works for you best. Now before we wrap up, let's not forget about the performance metrics. NCrunch provides detailed real-time metrics on test performance, such as execution time, which can be quite important for optimizing your tests. Here in the dashboard, you can see the metrics that help you identify bottlenecks in your tests. For example, if a particular test is taking too long, you might consider optimizing the test code or even reconfiguring NCrunch to allocate more resources to speed up the testing. And just to iterate, all of this can be configured. Do you want NCrunch to be always on with every key press? Sure thing. Do you prefer to have it at hand to make quick tests only when you want it to? Also doable. Do you just want to install it and for it to do nothing just because you like the feeling of having it by your side? I mean, I guess you can do that too. Within its configuration menus, you can change everything about this tool, from its modes to individual functionalities, memory usage, CPU usage, anything you can think of. You really appreciate this level of customization when you start using it on a daily basis. Each project has different requirements and being able to modify the tool to fit them all is honestly greatly appreciated. And that would be it. Now I know that this may have sounded like a great big ad for NCrunch, but I truly love to use this tool. We started working with NCrunch about two years ago and ever since this tool just stayed installed on my device. 
Default testing tools are usually clunky and slow and having something like this is really something I only knew I needed once I had it. So yes, you really should get it for yourself. Trust me on this one. And that was everything you need to know to start with NCrunch. From installing and setting up your environment, covering your code and inspecting data in real time to optimizing performance across distributed systems, NCrunch has got everything. So give it a try and see how it transforms your development process. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe and hit the bell icon for more tutorials like this. In the comments below, drop your questions or experiences with NCrunch. I'd love to hear how it's helping you streamline your testing process. If you have any other questions or just want to recommend a great tool for yourself, please treat the comment section as a forum for unit testers. The comment section is all yours. Thanks for watching. This is Dennis Panyuta and see you in the next video.